Cool, and we're live. Okay. Sweet. How Hello. Are you? Hey, everyone. <laughs> um, so, as always, please do let us know if you can see and hear us. That's always a good start. But I am here. I'm super excited because I'm here with Jacob Cast, the design legend from Oz. Good to have oh, you with us, Jacob. <laughs> Thanks. Excited to be here. Been working with you guys for a, a long time, so it's it's cool to chat with your community. As well. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm honestly out of all the guests we've had, I am like especially excited to have you on because you've just been such a big part of the industry. You've worked with some ridiculous clients, and so seeing under the hood for these guys should hopefully be really insightful. And and today, I believe you're going to share some of your process. But for the I don't know one person out there who might not know you and your story. Do you mind sharing a bit of backstory, please, Jacob? Yeah, of course. Um, so I run a business and blog called Just Creative, which is my personal design studio and blog, which I've been running for probably about 10 or, I don't know, 10 to 15 years. I, I lose track. Um, and on there, I, I share uh, resources, mostly around logos, branding, graphic design, and creativity. And on my work side of things, I, I specialize in logo design and branding but I've worked in um, interactive design and packaging and all, all sorts of things. Um, my true passion is logo design and branding, and that's what I'm gonna be talking to you about today. Going behind the scenes in, uh, of my process um, for probably two projects, depending on how the time goes. One is for an accountancy firm. I know it's not exciting, but uh, it's very interesting to show how important typography mm -hmm. is and, uh, in branding and how to work with um, something that's not so exciting. And then I'll move into another project, which is a little bit more creative to show you the differences of how you can adapt your style uh, for certain clients. So that's Incredible. it in a nutshell. And um, yeah, excited to share that. And for uh, for everyone out there watching, as I touched on, you have worked with some ridiculous clients. So I appreciate you being pretty humble there with your backstory. But you've done work for Jerry Seinfeld. You've done work for Nike, for Nintendo. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah so. You know, among, and, and that's tip of the iceberg, Disney. Powerade, like it's it's crazy. Your your portfolio is a pretty um, it's a bit of a unicorn, I would say. Yeah, it definitely is. So I, I actually just to to um, caveat that I I worked in New York for five years, and that's where I had access to these bigger brands. Uh, these days, I'm working for myself through uh, Just Creative. Uh, I work with small small mid sized businesses, getting them off the ground, and that's what I really love doing. Um, the big brands are great as well because you got access to those bigger budgets and um a team to work with as well so um there's both both sides of the fence so awesome and i love your recent work as well i've, I've been stalking your instagram more than usual lately <laughs> and yeah there's been some really cool case studies um so yeah before we jump into it and we've got a few people still showing up of course everyone give it up for jacob in the comments because the man's up at 5 a.m in australia oh, yeah. right now <laughs> to make to this that. cool um you know he's got a very very young child as well so uh, congratulations again there, Jacob, yeah. but um, getting up as a, as a new dad, 5 a.m., I'm super impressed that you made the effort for the community. <laughs> I'm sure they're going to get a ton of value out of it. Um, not quite as impressive, but I'm full of dreaded man flu, which is why I look like this. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> there was no way that we wanted to miss this, though. We definitely wanted this to happen. Um, but yeah, thanks for being here, Jacob. Of course. Thanks. Cool. So I'm going to give a, uh, a super quick shout out to everyone on the call um but we've got in fact we got we got more people than i can shout out these these are getting increasingly popular you guys but um just a few names i could see dana i could see smith sue juliana nick lady t what is up guys angela hola. yeah hola loads of people mm -hmm. um yeah thank you guys uh jacob told me to mute the mic if i'm coughing i was like spluttering at him as we're getting warmed up <laughs> Um, uh, Hazel, like gift, yeah. yeah, it's all right. I'll um, I'll let you do most of the talking today, Jacob. <laughs> <laughs> Get better soon. Yeah, thanks, buddy. Um, cool. So I, th I think people are going to keep joining. Teresa, what's up? And honestly, I feel like today is going to be a gold mine because I personally, I'm such a geek when it comes to these case studies and behind the scenes. It doesn't interest me so much when I see the final polished result. I mean, that's nice and all. But yeah. I always really geek out over like how, the process. How did he get there? How did he take it from a blank canvas or a sketch pad into what it is? And I think your process is really interesting. It's um, it's kind of reminiscent of uh, did you see the Draplin thing where he did a case, he did a case study for Linda, I think it was, uh, and yeah. where he just kept cloning it and tweaking it and changing it until yeah. he had this whole mood board looking thing. 
And um, totally. I think you, you kind of work in a similar way, right? Yeah, definitely. And yeah, looking back at what I shared last year, I, <clears throat> I, I didn't, I shared like 12 posts on Dribble last year and I, I realized how slack I've been with sharing process and work. It's like, I didn't even get my final work up there at least well, last year. So this year I'm really focused on sharing more of the process and um, going behind the scenes of things. So I'm glad that people are noticing. I think you should. And you shared the, uh, what's it called? Waves to Wilderness, that brand. Yep. And yep. that that seemed like it was really well received and popular. So it seems like yeah, people definitely have an appetite for it. Definitely, definitely. So yeah, I'll try to do a few more. I've ordered some audio equipment for my recordings. So hopefully take it up a little <laughs> more. Awesome. Yeah, we're doing the same, actually. Uh, not a lot of production value going on here. I'm in my living room because <laughs> I've been working from home. Yeah. But, but I've got a cool horse. Um, yeah. So, um, <laughs> Jacob, I guess final question before we jump into your demo. Have you got many examples of your much earlier work? Because we're actually launching a new series inspired by these Hangouts because a few people have come on and they've gone back to day one on their Instagram and showed the evolution of from, yeah. you know, their, their first stages to where they're at now because that's super yeah. inspiring for people so not not on this call but i'd love to chat to you afterwards and see if we could put something like that together for you because again it's really inspiring being like you know you haven't always been this expert and how did you get yeah. there very slowly yeah yeah definitely i, I have uh, all my years of work uh, online and i actually just went uh, to my mom's <clears> garage <throat> and found all my old university stuff and i found my very first logo that i did oh, was, uh, um, which wasn't too bad. It had negative space in it. And I was like, oh, this is actually pretty impressive for my first logo. <laughs> nice. But then the following ones after that were just not, not good. <laughs> but, I feel like yeah, it's, it's, um, cool. it's like professional sportsmen. You might have had the odd winner, but it's the consistency. Yeah. So it's probably a lot more hit and miss back then. But um, totally. yeah, I love that stuff as well. When I go back through my old hard drives and art books and stuff, it's like a real disparity. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I also um, list my evolution on my website as well in terms of um, my online presence how like my website's changed and how things have progressed as well so i keep that up to date too amazing um and correct me if i'm wrong i don't think we've had you on the honest designer show yet have we no no okay, we, i think we we've need... been meaning to so somehow this happened first but <laughs> yeah no we need to make that happen i think you'd be a killer yeah. guest for that as well um cool so leave a comment guys if you would like to see jacob dive into his first case study and show all the behind the scenes let's make this happen hopefully a bunch of people are about to comment otherwise it's awkward <laughs> <laughs> see like a hay ball go across the screen yeah exactly hey barbara just saw barbara join michelle cool um yeah jacob you, you're all um there, there tends to be a lag by the way in the comments okay um when, uh, right. when, okay. when more people yeah so there, there's not dead air um, All right. There, there, there can be That's like so up to a, yeah, <laughs> there can be like a ten second lag when there's um, a bunch of people on here because it it helps with lag and so on. Um, cool. Okay. We got a bunch of people who would like to see this case study. So Jacob, take it take it away. Okay. Cool. Uh, where's the application in there? Oh yeah. Thank you, everyone who made the later time. Um, it's had to be a kind of case of trying to make it work for everyone and. Again, props to Jacob for getting on at 5 a.m. to warm up with me. Um, but I'm glad we can make this happen. But there's no way I was going to try and ask Jacob to join at 2 in the morning. That might be a bit inhuman. Yeah, that was a little too early. This is doable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I think... We'll take it away. Yeah, the stream, screen is going to be shared soon. Uh, no, no, it's, so, it's uh, sharing right now. Okay, great. Perfect. So, so uh, Jacob, you probably won't be able to see the comments while you're screen sharing. That's normally yeah. how it works. So I will, um, I'll read out if there's any questions that come up. But as always, guys, put your questions for afterwards in the ask a question bit below this video. And Jacob's going to jump into some Q&A with me once he's done sharing this case study. Awesome. So, yeah, uh, like I said, this is for branding an, uh, an established company called Manning Elliott, who are accountants and business advisors. Uh, definitely not sexy, but it's something that you're going to come across when you're doing branding or even branding yourself, like you have, you have a name. So when you have a name, when you're trying to brand a company, often designers do try to create a, a, mon like a monogram or mark that combines the initials. So I wanted to do this because a lot of beginners, amateurs will want to do this. And this is a good exercise to learn because it, it definitely does happen in the real world. And yeah, if, even for something as sexy as accountancy. So <laughs> in, terms of, in terms of 
Uh, and like I said, I'm going to move into uh, another creative site, a project as if we have time. So um, this, this project, I wanted to talk about um, my process of how I start. And that's generally with sketching or mind mapping. And that's why I've got that on the screen here. Uh, I know they're not amazing sketches, but it helps me get ideas down quickly, uh, which then I can move into a program illustrator to uh, refine them. And it's much easier to move things around, especially when they're kind of geometric in nature and you can have access to all your, your fonts. So my process here is to, to scan in my ideas and then start working with typography. I know there's going to be some screen lag when I um, zoom out, but I'm going to show you my whole mood board, more artboard, uh, just to show you what we're going to be working with today. Damn. I was saying so, this before we jumped on, but I love how most people don't get to see the level of work that goes into these projects. Yeah. So, yeah, exactly. And this is a very uh, raw, unrefined um, art board. So there's um, another first step that I did. I'm going to zoom in here. I have like on my computer um, is looking at their competitors. So these, this was just a, a a look at some of their closest competitors, the colors they use, the type, and the website style. This is their current site um, the, and logo. I'll have to zoom in. Oh, wow, that looks pretty uh, neon. What they got going yeah, there? Yeah, it's, it's very neon, not what you'd expect with uh, accountancy. Yeah, I would say um, it maybe doesn't trigger feelings of trust and the kind of things you'd want. Yeah, so that's why I mean, the, the typeface is a little. Um, classic, it's, it's a little old school. So they wanted to be a little bit more modern and fresh, uh, professional, and they, they also wanted to be quite bold as well. But uh, for this, when I was, uh, for the first presentation, it would be, it was a presentation in front of about, I think eight, eight people. So there was a lot of opinions gonna be on in the room. And for the presentation, which I'll show you in the next, um, next document, I'll show you how I presented when, when there was eight people, CEOs and partners and all of that in the room to, um, diffuse any um, concerns between them and I showed many different font options. That would be um, really good okay. actually because that can be one of the biggest headaches of dealing with clients when it descends yeah. to group think, right? Yeah. What about this color? What about this font? What if you combine these? So uh, yeah, if you, they if think you they know better out, than you. <laughs> yeah. And it, that's the thing with um, bigger meetings is that um, it's you, you do have to show that eventually and cutting that out in the first round is, is good. So uh, I'm not, is this a good size for the screen? Or should I zoom in one more? Uh, what are you going to show? Like the font options Just, and that kind of thing? Yeah, the font. Yeah, I think that's pretty, uh, that's, that's a nice size, I think. Okay, cool. So yeah, a lot, a lot of it comes down to typography when, when you're working with just a name. And because a name is so unique, uh, the, you don't always need a logo mark or a unique logo mark. You could just work with the name and have a style like, like this, for example, you, it's just a little bit of a styling behind it and it makes it a little, more, little bit more earnable. So that was one idea I was working with, um, bold type and there's an elegancy behind it as well. So it's kind of a, 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 a joint effort there. So moving on, I, I experimented with this me idea, obviously the initials are me and I had this idea of, of um, Using that, like call me, like using the me motif, like call me, pay me, invoice me, uh, as a creative way to um, do their stationery or website or any, anything like that. So that was the idea of the me, similar to how your website is, where it's like just yeah. creative and then just uh, you know followed by various other words. Totally, totally, exactly right. So that was the the thinking there, and the idea of this particular um, idea was to have a. Uh, elegancy and then a little bit of a bold look and then I don't just stop there I see how it works as like a, a brand the headline and a sub, sub copy uh, is it is it a serif based sub copy or is it um, sans serif so start to experiment with that you never just do the logo in isolation it's important to see how it works stacked is it punctuation maybe try a different typeface uh, where are we going here so you can just see how my brain is thinking. Like I'm just cloning these uh, these paragraphs to see how it looks with different type. Uh, let's scoot over. It's like the digital equivalent of sketching. Yeah, exactly. It's pretty free, right, at this phase? Totally. So I'm just going to scroll. These are some of the ideas. <laughs> um, 
Th this one was using the ME, just kind of flipped on its side to for the initials ME. This is an M and an E in one uh, with lowercase lettering. So the, lo the use of lowercase lettering often gives a, an, a feeling of friendliness and approachability, which is what the differentiation is for this company because they're not one of the big four accountancy firms. They are um, just below them, but they offer the best value. They have access to really uh, great resources just with a discounted, not discounted, but more value, more reasonable price than the big boys. Yep. So that, the point of difference is that they're friendly and uh -huh. approachable. So this is why we're Love kind it. of leaning more in this direction. Uh, lowercase lettering, friendly, approachable type, um, modern, fresh. We haven't got that classic look. Um, whereas this Ch one is Ch Teresa in the comments is just saying this is fantastic to see the process and Marta uh, is saying how she normally starts all her logos in solid black and white and thinks about the colors later is there a reason why you kind of start with colors at this quite early phase um, I, I do do work in black and white but I knew that they had that turquoise color and it would or it would eventually be something like a blue or or something I just it kind of made me think on along that train of thought I yeah. do often work in black and white, but um, it kind of you do need some contrast. So I found when I was when I was working with this to differentiate the, uh, I guess the subheaders, the calls to actions, and this. Um, you could work in black and white, and I, I do I, that often. I like too. the color, to be honest. But yeah, I guess each to their own. Um, Lady T as well is uh, talking about how she normally gives the customer five options. So this many is awesome. But just to clarify, Jacob, the client didn't get to see all of these, right? This is more you mind mapping before you get to the final proposal. This, this is me mind mapping, but I think in uh, the next next one I do, I think I showed um, five main options with two sub options. So different fonts and colors, so about about right. Um, yeah. But uh, we actually did a live call and I showed, uh, we did some edits live with them at the conference call because they were trying to ask about combining things. Uh, Frankenstein and things. I, so yeah. I did a live screen call with them to show them um, why, in this case, it wouldn't work, and yep. then to show it in contrast with what I, I'd recommend. So I, I always listen to clients and try to do what they want, but then show them another way, which and uh, kind of sell that idea through if that's what you believe is, is correct. And often they'll see that way too. Nice. Um, and guys, remember, do click the ask a question bit and put your questions in now. Jacob is super experienced how long have you been doing this actually jacob uh probably about 15 years 10 years professionally uh focused on branding mm -hmm. yeah so um definitely get your questions in guys you should be picking jacob's brain today this is access to a real industry veteran i remember jacob i i think i got to know you when i was doing my design blog so this is yeah, like PSC fan. yeah this is like pre-design <laughs> cuts even um, and you're kind of one of the originals in my mind. So it was like you and Chris Booner and Bill Peters and a lot of yeah, these early yeah. people that were sharing in the design community before anyone else was doing it, before there were hundreds of design blogs out there. Yeah, there's so many blogs now. But yeah, that were the early days when there was only a few hand a handful of blogs, design blogs. And um, yeah, it was a nice small knit community. Yeah, the good old days, <laughs> yeah, just yeah, to make us sound old. old. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> cool. So, so, yeah, what what are like the next phases then for this brand? Yeah. Um, so these are some of the. Uh, oh, here's the let me idea. Come like pay me, hire me, get me to do it kind of thing. And you can st see how I've, I've I've experimented with type to see what is working, like how they work with the logo. The the contrast in this example is a big blocky type with thin letters, um, light, understated, clean, sophistication. I like writing these words because it kind of um, kind of says what it is and it yep. helps clients read what, what it is and the differences, uh, which often they're like, oh, they look the same, but you look closer and they're, they're actually small nuances. Um, so yeah, these are, these are all the experimentations I've did. And I don't often show all of this to clients, but it's kind of where um, my head's at. So nice, yeah. great questions coming in as well, guys. So keep them coming. And also, Jacob, in the uh, comments, I can already see people like voting on which ones are their favorites. Uh, yeah. I, I think I've got, I'm intrigued to know which one uh, ends up being the final because I think I'm leaning towards one in particular. Cool. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's good. It's nice to be able to like, oh, choose that one, but you often don't know the full story behind what's actually right for them. Of course. Um, I kind of gave it you. I kind of gave an insight to their thinking of behind the uh, their their 
positioning in the market. So and and that's so key, right? That context is everything. It doesn't just come down to like, oh, that suits my personal style. It's what's going to perform best for them. Did you get much of a brief for this one? Yeah, so there was there was a brief, um, and it was improve what we have. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, and they just they wanted to be bold, and they wanted to be clean, modern, and professional, which is what everyone says. <laughs> <pretty> <laughs> sure. Much. Yeah. Um, and but, and do you do much digging? We talk about this on the Honest Designer Show, like the research phase into like really learning the DNA of the company that you're designing for. Yeah, definitely. And the, there was one point of contact that I had with the most and they, I kind of got to understand them and I kind of condensed what I said before in terms of what they're after. Uh, and that's where we got to it. They, they, they had their previous logo, which they, no one really liked and no one understood. Apparently the, the previous designer said it was a ME as well, but I, I, I don't see that. Yeah. Um, but they, at, at first they were like, no, we don't want to use ME, but I, I, kind of showed many options and they got convinced of, of, of it and that mm -hmm. there's a lot of potential behind it. So, um, yeah, anyway, I'm going to get into the next document. So after I've, I've kind of done that, uh, process, I kind of get a short list of every, of the, all the logos that I kind of put together and type. So this is a short list. There's even more than what you probably saw before. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. So this is a short list and I didn't present all of these. Um, and I kind of, after I put this short list together, I made some slides of the order I wanted to present them in. So yeah, you can start zoom in a little bit. Yeah, more. yeah, I'd love to zoom on. You've got a great comment from Juliana who says, this actually makes me feel better in that I am a total newbie to this kind of thing. Um, and it, uh is not my kind of thinking uh seeing that professional goes to such lengths to get the right look makes me feel like less of an idiot <laughs> cool. and it's true like it, it's you know you, you don't just spit out the perfect outcome in 10 seconds it's a process totally yeah and some, some are quicker than others and sometimes you get it straight away but there's you can always improve you could i could have stopped at something the first like three and i'm sure the client would have uh like them in some respect, uh, but or they could have came back to the drawing board. But it's just for yourself and uh, to really know that you're producing the best work, and that's that's what I, I strive for as well. So, mm -hmm. um, coming back to the the, pr the presentation, this is kind of a rough idea of how I want to lay out the sides, and I want to start the presentation off with talking about their current business, where they're at, um, the current logo, their positioning in the market uh, with the colors of other competitors. And then I'd move into what I, I always present my strongest concept first, uh, what I believe is the strongest concept, just leading out of the gate. And in this particular presentation, I, I led with this one because it was a little bit more approachable and it was clever with the ME. Um, the line here kind of made it so you could flip it on its side and well, you could see that as an MNE, then it kind of makes you tilt your head a little bit. So that was the thinking behind that. Um, and in this particular presentation, I showed different colors um, just because color is very subjective um, and people may or may not like blue or like you could see it, how different it is with uh, a gold or a red, for example. And this is kind of just to, to cure people's curiosity of saying, oh, what's it going to look like in this color? Yeah, I think the blue is my favorite. Um, what font is that, by the way? It's gorgeous. Uh, it is Montserrat. I thought it might be cool, which is actually a free font, right? For uh, yes, it is. It is. It is. Yeah, um, one of there's, one there's, of the best free fonts, hand down. Yeah, it is. It is great. Um, there's some in similar ones out there, uh, not so free. Um, Gotham, Proxima Nova, Poppins, Gilroy, um, all similar traits. Man, I bought Proxima Nova was my first premium font purchase when I was doing web design, and it was so expensive that I ended up using it for the next like ten client projects, whether it was a good fit or not. I just slapped <laughs> on every website. <laughs> uh, that's a great one. I, I use that for my my brand and logo and everything. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, sorry, sorry, we just got Danny asking what font it is. Montserrat. Yeah, yeah, great font there. So yeah, moving in th throughout the presentation, I show on the next slide how, uh, what I was saying to you guys, how important it is to consider the logo in the context of uh, typography, uh, the, the headers, subheaders, calls to action, what the actual icon looks like in a social media profile. That's always another question they ask. 
I love the icon. It's great. Thank you. Um, and then, yeah, sharing in context of the card, they haven't, they never, they don't actually pay me for the card or anything. Like this is just to sell the idea through and maybe if they want to move into stationary after the fact, then we can talk about it. But I, I often give more than what clients pay for just to sell things through and for them to understand how important it is at, to think of the uh, branding as a whole. And even, even in other projects, I'll go as far as making mockups and many other things just to, to sell the idea through because that's the hardest part of um, design is selling your ideas. And if you put the extra effort in, it's going to make your life easier and you'll have less revisions, less rounds. So yep. putting the effort in from the beginning. 100%. So guys, for everyone watching and listening, two huge tips there. One is over deliver which yep. I think applies to any kind of service or product, but you can see how Jacob applies that here, but equally use mockups. That's why we sell mockups. That's why we're huge advocates of showing your work in the real setting. So whether it's a business card showing it on the side of a van or a building or whatever's relevant for the client, that really sparks the client's imagination because it's all well and good seeing something that's beautiful with a load of negative space and a flat document. But it really, when they're like, oh, I can actually understand how that's going to look on our office wall or on our letterhead or something like that. Exactly. So uh, how, how are we going with time? Six o'clock. So I don't, I don't know if I fly through this, but not fly, but can, <laughs> I'm just going to show it on this screen. Okay. It will show, rather than zoomed in, um, you can get the idea. So you can see how I'm moving through the concepts, um, showing how they work with different uh, fonts and colors. So and you can see in this, can you see my cursor? I can, yeah. Okay, cool. So you can see with these three, um, this is like one concept with sub concepts. So uh -huh. I've shown it how, how the brand works with different colors. So this one is gold and you can, this, if you show gold and something like uh, the teal to clients, they're like, oh, gold is premium and the other one is not so premium. And like, uh, I want to suggest to them that print this gold, uh, color may not actually be right for them because it may be a little too premium and you may come across as too expensive. So they're like, they get that. I'm like, oh, maybe uh, you could use a teal or a blue to kind of bring it back a bit. You're still looking professional. It's still bold. It still have a classic um, look as well. Yeah, um, but, not, but more approachable. But, but more approachable. But I also show this third option and they get to understand that this is what a classic approach would look like. And then they're like, oh, this is not what we want. So they know that we can cross that they off. We don't have to. Exactly. Yeah, that's so, smart. And that makes them feel so much older as a company. Yes. Like, exactly. I, I bet if you showed the two and said, guess the average age of people that work here, it would be like 20 years older if you showed that final one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which is, it can work for companies. And I'm, I bet if we brand them that way, they could charge more and they could become across come across as a much more higher end professional accountancy but it's yeah. not right for them yeah if it, if it was like berkshire hathaway or something i'd be like yeah i want like some fusty old dudes who've got loads of experience but they're going young mm -hmm. and fresh and, and different right exactly exactly so yeah moving through the presentation you can see how i use this uh, i showed the the pay call me get to know me pay me idea um, do, you people, mind, do you mind zooming in slightly? A couple of people are saying, yes. please, Jacob. Thanks, okay. buddy. So this was the ME, uh, me idea, just really owning it. The, um, simple idea, but it's something that will definitely stand out in their uh, competitive marketplace. So um, bright, vivid colors uh, and a little bit of fun quirkiness to it, which is, is, is nice for an accountancy firm. <laughs> Jacob, do you feel same as me with this? When I did um, more design work myself, it was almost like a superpower being able to make people stand out in their market. And it's so satisfying because most people have pretty bad brands. And so when you come on the scene with something like this, which is super slick and clean and professional, to see how suddenly they just are elevated in the pool of their competitors is a really nice feeling. That was my favorite part. Totally, and the, the competitors come scrambling, and then you start to see them refresh their looks or websites and yeah. things like that. They're playing catch up. <laughs> it's cool. Okay, so yeah, that, that's the idea here. You, you kind of just get uh, where I'm going with presenting the, the, the fonts, uh, the colors, and the logo together just to show how the brand works, and sometimes in the context of a card if it makes sense or something else. Um, so yeah, oh, this is another important slide because 
I, I want to show them the, the difference. Like, this is another one of my favorite concepts, but I'm not sure entirely if it's 100% right with the way it is here because it's too premium on the left side. Yeah. So I wanted to talk to them about how color and type can really make it um, different. So for example, the, the lowercase lettering combined with elegance could be a good combo, <laughs> could be a good combo for them. So another uh, top tip there, guys, but educate your clients. Take the Definitely. time to actually, you know, they can come away from it having learned something. You should make them better at being versed in design than they were before they uh, hired you. And I think that's so huge. So many designers, it's almost like I'm going to keep you in the dark because that's going to make me more of an expert because I don't want to give away my secrets. But just being super transparent and involving them in that concept is uh, a powerful thing. Totally, you said it exactly right. So, yeah, that's um, yeah. Education is crucial. So, this you can kind of see the, the last page. These are the logos I presented to them. Uh, what was it? Six. There was about I think four, and then two sub, like two A, two B. So, and I also put their competitors there just because to, to compare them, which they they appreciated. Uh, and I also show a black and white slide as well. <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry a black and white slide to uh, show the logos in black and white because, because color can be very subjective. So yeah, um, like we were saying before, black and white helps. But instantly, all of those versions for me stand out compared to the competitors quite significantly. I'm yeah, intrigued yeah, which one they go with. Do, do we get to find out which one they go with or is it uh, ongoing? Uh, it's most likely number one. It's ongoing at the moment, but okay, uh, the cool. vast majority were they're headed towards number one. Nice. Um, Yep. And uh, I'm not sure if I showed this slide. I think this was at near the beginning. Uh, I wanted to show that the logo would have different orientations. So with a tagline, without a tagline, and stacked and vertical, horizontal, just for different instances. So um, on a website header or better head. But um, that's not to say that these are going to be final logos, but I just want to show that uh, that's what they would receive at the end of it. Very Stacked cool. And again, this is very value packed, guys, but I think this is something clients love as well, just the versatility, because they're, they're not a designer. They don't want to think, are we getting this one limited option and we won't be able to like rejig it and have variants of it ourselves because we don't have that skill set. So getting all these nicely balanced variations is like a value adder for them. Yep, exactly. So after I've, I've put all these slides together, I, just on a, on a rough like this, I put them together in a more, in a, in a PDF presentation. Sometimes I use InDesign if it's a lot of pages, uh, other times just Illustrator. Very cool. People are loving it in the comments, by the way, Jacob. I know you can't see them. Smith just said, wow, the organization of the studies of the logos are amazing. People are just kind of <laughs> horse chuck at like how organized you are with it all. Cool. Uh, I'll show you another, pro I'm not sure how the time is, but I, in contrast yeah. to- Are you, are you okay with time? Because I'm, I'm loving this, to be honest. I think everyone else is. Yep. Yeah, cool. I'm, I'm okay with time. Awesome. Uh, this, this is, I'm moving on from Manning Elliott to a project called, it's a finished project called Montage Travel, which is a travel agency. And they craft your memories, which is their tagline. Um, and this is a the mood board. And you can kind of, it's a little bit more creative. The name is very descriptive. So montage is a lot to, to work with there. And oh, wow. a lot more than um, just like an initials or the name of Manning Elliott. And that's why I want to show you in contrast of, of working um, of something that's a little bit more descriptive. And cool. yeah, um, similar. Victor just said he's loving it, by the way. Uh, Teresa said, damn, Jacob, now I want to redo my own logo. And I haven't even, she, I actually, I've been working with Ter Teresa. She's been rebranding her site um, and it's looking amazing, but I know what you mean. You you become such a perfectionist, and whenever I see work at the standard, I'm like, damn, I want to go back to the drawing board. Um, yeah, I, and, I love doing this. Yeah, so. me too. Um, Angela says as well, if I keel over, then just keep going, Jacob. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, yeah, it's just hours go by when I, I do branding projects, and you put your earphones on and just go. So this is this is where I started. Um, this is a type wall, which I, I call it. And I, I generally have a, a document that I just have a template for, and I go in and just do finding the place. Um, and I type in montage travel. Oops. 
how do you find your fonts like are they all fonts you've got on your system and you just cycle through one by one by one um or do you pick out some that spring to mind or do you go buy new ones or how does it work yeah well my, uh, design cards have been handy with fonts because you guys have some amazing <laughs> sure. package deals uh and nice I, plug, um, jacob <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yep check out design cards um <laughs> Yeah, I, I love my fonts. It's my favorite uh, font website, but there's there's many more out there. And I, I love my fonts because it's quick to find fonts and they have a great search engine and um, you can really experiment with the type, the type easily. But I have, I have literally, uh, let me just load my font explorer. I have 61,000 fonts, so there's a oh lot. Oh my there. God, how does it not crash? <laughs> yeah, I, I have, how many do I have installed? I have, um, Activated fonts. I have 2,400 fonts activated. Okay. Um, which is way too many. It slows down my computer, but I work with it every day. So I, I prefer to have them there. Yeah, yeah. Activated. That's a lot of fonts. Damn. Yeah. Um, so, I, yeah, this is the type wall. I type in find and replace, um, find, and then you can replace, and it just changes all the, the text to whatever you want. And I find that a very easy way to to just see what the your brand is going to um, look like in different typefaces. So actually, uh, while, while we're still on fonts, Jacob, um, have you got any way of categorizing and organizing them on your system? So when you're looking for different styles or sans versus serif, that kind of thing? Uh, I wish I did. I've always wanted to, but it's just my memory, to be honest. I uh -huh. yeah, I have a few favorites. And then if I like one, I'll, I'll often look at the character characteristics of it and um, the classification and then look online for similar fonts in that classification or that have okay. similar traits. Cool. And if I if I don't know one, then I'll, I'll use what what the font, which is a, a cool tool from my fonts as well. Yeah, it's, it's good. Yeah. So yeah, start at the type wall and uh, let undo that. I start to see where I what is kind of standing out. And I, I couldn't find my original sketches for for this project. Um, the font link was missing for some reason, but. I, I started with sketches and I kind of came in and um, vectorized the, the work. I, I really like this idea of a butterfly for, um, but in a way that's um, kind of combined, you know, like a geometric form. It's it's a little trendy, this whole geometric um, nature, which we didn't actually end up going this route, but I, I love the, the look and feel of it. Uh, I kind of got this idea from Monarch, which was a little inspiration I got on Dribble. And yeah, it, that's kind of spurred my idea from that. And this, this color palette was um, from this document, this little stin bit, stin bit. Um, I'm not sure where I got them from, cool. but it's important to, to find inspiration, get colors, get ideas, and kind of spur your imagination of what is possible. Um, so let's see where I went with this. There's no, there's no real method here. I just kind of just go with ideas and um, what was the kind of brief here? Um, what were they looking for? They, this is a new company that was starting off the ground. They are um, focused in mainly in Europe, but also globally, um, which is it, they weren't going, they, they, they didn't have any specific uh, creative direction, but they were going to be focused more on um, itineraries for the um, individual, so customizing itineraries. Uh -huh. It, it, it looks like um, it's going slightly abstract, obviously super bright. The bottom right one there reminds me of Slack. Oh, yeah, yep, yeah, the montage. So we the bright colors actually ended up being a little too bright for the audience because she was going to be focused more on European destinations and it's a little bit more rustic and um, a lot of history in Europe. So we ended up not using this bright direction, but that's what I was experimenting most with um, in the beginning. Um, we ended up using that nice color palette here for in, at the end. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, beautiful, uh, actually. That color palette. Yeah, you're trying yeah. to find your place. There's just so, yeah. so much design yeah. work to so, get through. So yeah, um, yeah. I kind of when I, when I'm getting ideas that I like, I kind of put them in a section of the document, and um, oh, I'm like, oh, this could work. This could work, and I just leave them up there. There's different, so many different ways with a word like montage that you could explore, and I had a lot of fun with this. And like, is it the letters being montage? Is it actually the whole, like the two words being montage? Is it the actual icon being a montage, or is there a graphic element that could relate to the track, like um, the name? Is it a 
is it an M? Would, it, would this be like a, a graphic that you could then fill in photos with, which I did somewhere else on this document? Um, could these triangles be used as a, a montage element? So it, yeah. it's kind of thinking out of the box of how would this icon be used for the rest of the brand? And um, yes, it's a simple two triangles, but it could be used so much more like where you can see here. Um, or is it um, overlays of letters? Is it overlays of letters again, but um, in blocks? Is it actually like it's something really quirky like uh, this, uh, whatever you call it here, montage of letters? It's, yeah, it's um, like Kandinsky little... or something. Yeah, exactly. It's totally different, but I, I, when I, I often do searches on, on Shutterstock or Dribbble or um, Logo Lounge or some other sites just to kind of get my train of thought, and I think I'm going to go down here. Jacob, so, I, can, I is... can see that you don't go obvious um, or, or stereotypical. So when it's a travel site, you're not like sticking a plain outline on that or something like that. Is there a reason for that? Yeah, because it's, I guess that's the thing that most designers or people coming into in the industry, even clients even, they expect, um, hey, I, I own a computer business. I want to have a computer in the logo. I have a travel business. I want a plane. You don't need to show what the business does in the logo. It's, it's simply for identification, and that's that's it. So don't box yourself in by, by putting actual things of the um, business into a logo. It actually can be detrimental if they branch out into other industries uh, or if they have sub-brands or anything like that. So it's important to consider. I'm not saying rule it out in completely, but it's it's not something you should always strive for. So think outside yeah. of the box. Um, there's different ways to brand a travel company and then put in a plane in it, especially when it's a cool creative word like montage. So. Yeah, and it's kind of evocative. So with the butterfly, that for me um, invokes freedom and kind of ties in with travel, you know, spreading your wings and, and, and that kind of thing. So it's um, just a more subtle way of representing yeah. what the company is about. Totally. And unfortunately, my, the, my client didn't like butterflies, so that kind of ruled out. Oh, no, I uh, love the butterfly. But, yeah, yeah. Um, this idea is kind of where I got the, the box idea from. I, when I typed in Shutterstock Montage, these came back. And I'm like, oh, that's really cool. And I could try to see how that could relate to the name and it kind of worked with the letters here it's a little different um i i didn't maybe it would work like i was like oh this is too difficult to be a brand but maybe that's yeah. a display model but maybe that could be the like the bottom left to be the simple version of it well, the one with the angles reminds me of i think kayak's logo oh uh, yeah like the um the the what do you call them? The, the price comparison the thing. Things, like, yeah, yeah, the things they changed. It, it kind of it's kind of a little bit too childish, like play blocks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But uh, I didn't mind this variation at the top here. Um, thank, can thank you for all the great comments, by the way, guys. Juliana just said she uh, unfortunately has to go uh, make supper, I think, for the family. But it's really, really fascinating. So she's going to catch the replay for sure. Awesome. Yeah, and you can start to see I've grabbed inspiration from the web, all different spots. Like there's butterfly and colors from the web and elsewhere. So th these are just kind of, I can take colors or borrow, borrow colors from different brands and see how they work together. I love this cool uh, the map iconography here. Um, oh yeah, so typography kind of thing? Yeah, type, that's it. I don't know what I said. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so yeah, this is kind of my creative process when there's something more creative. Um, this was the direction they ended up liking the most, and I, I enjoyed it a, well, a lot as well. It's kind of like using boxes of... Um, oh, cool. The, the, we didn't use the bright colors, but it, we ended up to be something like this, um, where it was like a montage of different boxes, which we would then use for to put like photos of, say, the Eiffel Tower or uh, Colosseum or whatever into it as well, like as a graphic device. So I yeah. experimented with different dots and layouts. Is it structured? Is it less... Is it straight? Is it a diamond? Um, again, I'm still playing with the the butterfly idea. Uh, yeah, I still like the butterfly. It's cool yeah. though. It's, your work's always so balanced. That's what strikes me about it. And also, I don't know why, because each piece is different, but you're one of the designers where I think you've got quite a distinct style. So when I see a logo, I can be pretty sure it's yours. <laughs> and I, I don't know what that is, but there's something. Yeah. I. I... I don't know. It's, I like simple, clever ideas that kind of relate to the name and that can be used as a branded device elsewhere. So that's kind of what I, I strive for. 
um, that my, that, I guess that's where my thinking comes into it. I was going to show you this, um, this section. So you're probably familiar with the Unilever logo up here. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Yeah, it was a pretty clever logo that came out um, a number of years ago. And it was quite innovative at the time. I'm sure there was something before that, but it's one that really got the public's attention because it was so different. But you can see that that this style obviously gets emulated in, in different logos. But something like Montage Travel, I thought that was a really cool idea. And I started experimenting with um, icons to see if that could be combined into uh, an M, for example, for Montage. Um, but I didn't actually draw all these icons um, just to save time to see how it would work. But I, I used like an icon pack of different places just to sell the concept idea through to the client. I ended up not using it just because I, um, I, I felt it was a little bit too busy for the, for the brand. Yeah, but I feel like it's not, it's not the right letter form as well for it. Like an O or something might work better, but an M is a bit awkward. Yeah, it is. It is. So I, I, I experimented, didn't work. Um, this is another cool thing. I, there's some logo makers out there on the web that use something similar. It's kind of like a, a scale that you can talk to your clients about and just to get a feel of their, the wavelength of where they're at. Is their brand masculine or feminine, simple, um, gray? It's just, it gets, if they can put the line of where it is, then uh, you get an understanding of what they think their brand is. And then maybe you can come back and say, well, maybe your target audience would appreciate something a little bit more modern versus classic or a little bit more mm -hmm. raw than refined. So not so another big tip there guys. And um, wh wh where did you get that? Uh, that's a good question. I can't remember. I need to make one of these for myself. Um, cool. Let, let's make yeah, one. Pretty easy. We, yeah. we can share it with the community. But the tip there is um, you're getting the clients buy in. So when you basically give them what they want, they're less likely to push back and say that's not right. Because it's like, well, if you remember, you know, you asked for this, this and this, and that ties into the final piece, uh, which I'm presenting. So, um, you know what I mean? There's less chance for it to go wrong. Yep. Uh, yeah, this is a great idea. I need to, to I've only used this a couple of times, um, but it, it has come in handy. And yeah, I, I should make one. I, just, I think I just grabbed this graphic and asked the client to put it where it was very quickly when we're on a call. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's, that's a bit about the process. Uh, I think we're going to run out of time. So for, Yeah, I love it, man. Yeah, let's, um, are, you, are you good if we jump into some Q&A? Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing, Jacob. That's um, Normally, I would have more team members around me, uh, but let's give it up for Jacob, even if it's just me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no, really, really appreciate you sharing, buddy. Um, and as I said at the start, I'm such a geek with that kind of stuff. I love seeing that behind the scenes, under the hood look into your workflow. So um, let's maybe try and do some quick fire questions because I know uh, we're running a little bit short on time, but I'd love to get around everyone. So uh, Lady T says, how do you find your clientele or do they find you? I have an inbound marketing strategy, meaning I have a lot of content mark, uh, a lot of content on my website, which gets ranked in search engines, which then they come to that content and then see my portfolio online. And that's, that's from many years of work. I have a lot of um, SEO juice. So it's, it's not a, a strategy that's going to work for everyone, but um, a lot of consistency is, is how my site ranks well in search engines. So I've never yep. made for advertising, but um, it's a longer term strategy that, that has paid off. I love it. And I talk about this all the time. It's branding versus sales. Sales is more direct pitching clients, whereas branding uh, is a much more long term play. So if you've got a decade to put out content, get a reputation, you're going to get more inbound stuff. But realize it doesn't happen overnight. It takes years and years and years to build that up. Yeah, exactly. Um, but cool. in, the, in the end, you're going to get more um, more work from it and less work doing the marketing and spending money. But it's that upfront investment where everyone else is kind of pitching clients and you're there putting out blog posts but getting nothing from it initially and it's having the yep. faith that will pay off down the line. Yeah. And at, at first, I didn't realize I was just doing blogging as a, a way to do, um, share my design process. And then I found out this whole world of blogging and um, branding and everything like that. So Love it. Smart though. Um, so Juliana says, how do you get started? I need a logo for my initials, JZ, uh, not like the rapper. Uh, <laughs> and I just can't figure out how to make them pop. So for someone who's maybe not quite as experienced um, as you for that kind of letter form logo, how would you advise she digs into that? 
Uh, it's good you asked because that's the the homework that we we're giving you guys is to to create a logo based on your initials. And uh, Love it. yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's it's so a good way to start. <laughs> yeah. Ah, oh, wasn't I not meant to reveal it? My bad. <laughs> That's right. Everyone forget that. Uh, but yeah. no, no, I'd love to get any early tips um, so people can have it front of mind when you set the homework. Yeah, uh, the best way to start with initial, if you're just in initials or a monogram, is to, to sketch ideas because jumping onto a computer straight away is, is um, a good way to not fail, but it, it's a good way to discard ideas that you may not have got originally. So mm -hmm. especially when it's so playful and everyone's going to have two different different initials so sketch and then look uh look at different fonts as well because there's so many fonts out there that everyone and there's so many different letter forms that you could get inspiration from um, other designed letter forms and maybe something that you didn't think could be combined you have some weird initials for example could be combined in a different way or look look online to see uh if there's other logos out there already that have that um those initials being used and you can see how you can differentiate it or get some new ideas. So um, especially when you're starting out, it can be difficult because your brain's not hardwired to, to do that just yet. And um, you need to get that process and thinking, creative thinking going. And a good way to do that is to learn from others. And I, I don't want to say copy, but you can um, copy one uh, logo and learn from that and then apply what you've learned to your new work. Oh, great answer. Thank you. Um, so uh, Ferry asks, presenting five different options for a logo, doesn't that overwhelm your client and make it harder for them to choose? Well, I wouldn't present anything that wasn't, isn't going to work for them or isn't going to help sell through another idea. Um, so yeah. yes, too many options can be detrimental, but you need to know your client and sometimes they enjoy more concepts than just say one or two. I've definitely presented uh, in the past just one or two ideas and that's worked if, it, if you're really 100% on it. But sometimes I found, especially when there's more people in the room that, that some more options can be helpful for a discussion uh, and you can talk about, it. You, can, you can present ideas that you don't think are gonna work and you can show why they're not working and it helps educate the client on the different avenues. So that's, that's what I found to be helpful. Awesome. Um, Lisa Smith in the comments just asked, uh, it might be a silly question, but what size artboard and illustrator do you start with so you have room for all your brainstorming and experimentation? Or do you just keep expanding uh, it? Uh, I maximize it at the beginning. So it's okay. one big artboard, yeah. Cool. Um, Sam B says, uh, when you have a client who is basically, uh, who basically co-designs with you, and they need to be part of every process, needing you to try new things, even if you already have or you think they don't work. How do you deal with the neediness and preserve the quality of the design? It's a great question, actually. Co-working is um, something, yeah, it's, it's difficult. Um, oh, yeah, I haven't I've actually done it that often, so I can't really advise on it because I, I try to do my work in isolation because I feel more creative that way. And I, I guess in a wider I, sense, um, even if it's not sat right with you, but like throughout the process, they're just being too um, invasive for your process. Like, yeah. how do you how do you deal with that and get them to maybe but, back off? Okay, yeah, that's a better way to phrase it. I I, I always listen to the client and uh, I, I say and tell them that you understand what they're saying. And often, if they're that pushy, I will do exactly what they ask for. And then also give my recommendation of why uh, of what I think is a better way forward, and sell through my idea uh, on the reasons why, and also show their version and say and compare them side by side because that way they can see the differences and put it in context of their um, the metrics of success for them. So, what is is it more sales? Is it um, better brand image? Is it try to are they trying to be more premium in the market? You have to yep. put put it in context of what they're trying to achieve uh, and that will help, yeah, for sure. Awesome, um, Sam's got another great question. Uh, she talks about um, mocking up the logo using business cards and that kind of thing, even though it's not on the contract. Uh, how often do you actually manage to essentially upsell them on something else? So it's like your logo could look great with this and, and then they yeah. order a whole like stationary set or something. Um, generally, the so even if they uh, just wanted the logo and brand identity and they said, no, I don't want cards, I 
it's not very difficult to, to design a card. And it's actually helped me think in the process. So it's kind of like helping me get my ideas through. Even, even if they haven't paid for it, it, it helps the ideas mature and can see how a brand works in context. So um, often they see it and they, they, they get it. Sometimes they're like, oh, I need a business card now. But often the discussion in the first rounds are discussing what they actually need and they'll, they'll know whether or not they need a, a card. Um, yeah. It's less used these days, but there's certain businesses that definitely need it and some people that just run a digital business and they, they don't need it, but they're like, oh, mm -hmm. it's a nice to have, but they don't really want to spend X amount to, to invest in a card when they're not going to use it maybe once yeah. a month. Fair enough. Um, and Smith, uh, I think it was, yeah, Smith asks about deadlines. So if you ever get multiple deadlines and they're due within a 24-hour period, how do you handle the pressure and I'm curious about this actually. Do you often get that pressure or are you super organized and on top of deadlines always? Um, the people's deadlines are made up most of the time. And <laughs> it's 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 true. Unless there's like a launch date for, for some like client like presentation or conference or something, often these deadlines are just made up and it's really figuring out what the true deadline is and why that date's there. Um, because you don't want to rush the creative process and I always tell my clients, and I put this in my proposals, that the process is generally two to four weeks. So they have expectations, and yeah. that way you're not putting yourself in a in a bubble, and you get time to make good work. So, so, so uh, there's that flexibility. There's a, a leeway of a fortnight yeah. rather than like midnight on the 18th kind of thing, yeah. which, which stress you yeah. out. And I, I don't I don't have um, a set schedule like that. I never put that in my proposals and it may work for some and may not for others, but yeah. I, I like keeping things open. And I found that, especially working with a global um, clientele, with global clientele, um, everyone has different working hours. So it's hard to have milestones of like, have to get it here at this time or uh, whatever. But generally, yeah. I, it's, it's just best to keep them in the loop at all times saying, I'm still working on your project. As long as they're like, communicated with then the it, i find it it's it's okay awesome and i think uh final question was from marta uh who says how do you deal with the fear to design a logo and later find out it looks just like a logo that some other company already has do you uh search to see if your final design choice is totally different from others i'm guessing that might be kind of impossible because you can't search every logo that exists right yeah, you can't you can't search you can't search every logo. I've had um, logos approved, and then they go to the trademark board, and there's like some small similarity of some other logo, and they put in a request to dec um, to um, not decline it to um, request for it to be changed, and that's happened a couple of times. Do you charge for that? Or no, they, they they've actually done this on on their own, so I don't I don't deal with that process. Um, okay. it's a whole different ballpark, and not not something I'm interested in in terms of, of spending time with trademark attorneys and things like that. So if they want to do that, then that, that's hundred percent fine. And I can revise anything that it's not um, trademarkable uh, in yeah. terms of like doing unique work. It, that's, that's why I go through such a process of finding different concepts. And if one for some reason is similar to another one, we can come back to the drawing board. Um, obviously um, you're going to do some research, research up front. You can do reverse Google image searches to see if there's anything else similar um, out there. And yeah, that, that's a good way to, to avoid it. But it's also, there's, there's also going to be tons of similarities. Like even logos out there today, there's, there's so many that um, what use Helvetica or just have similarities together, um, but they're in totally different industries and they can work um, in, uh, in parallel really. So I wouldn't get too disheartened about it. There's there's less and less original ideas these days. It's just making something um, different enough and original enough and with other th other things in, in context as well. Um, logos, fonts, colors, type. It makes all those things make the brand different, not just the logo. Love it. Um, yeah, thank you so much for answering the questions. If you got uh, like five minutes more, yeah. is that cool? Yeah, yeah, um, of course. Awesome. So, um, guys, put this is something new that I want to start trying on these calls. And so you're going to be our guinea pig, I'm afraid, Jacob. Um, yeah. But just to finish it on like a fun note, I want to put in some personal questions that have nothing to do with design. Um, so just yeah, anything yeah. that you want to know about Jacob. I've got a couple uh, lined up here if you guys can't think of any, <laughs> but 
pop it in the ask a question bit just to end on like a fun note and then i'm going to give a recap and then we can get into the homework for this week and then i'm going to go lie down <laughs> so uh, <laughs> um yeah i would say um what is the favorite country that you've traveled to because for the anyone who doesn't know jacob basically has been traveling the world for years working remotely and living the dream with his lovely wife um and now they're a bit more settled with the little one um but i think you guys have forever got the traveling bug so what's the most amazing place that you've been to yeah definitely have the travel bug still uh we we've often had this conversation what's the favorite place we, we've been to 85 countries and our favorite one is south africa and that's because of the safaris the people the lifestyle there's amazing road trips scenery um, wildlife it's just a totally unique place it's a little bit off the beaten track it's, it's not europe and it's not asia less less tourists and it's just incredible and um the people there are just they have soul and it's just a, a great place so it's one of our favorites and we're hoping to get back there next year love it um amy just asked did you have a mentor ever you know i, I didn't have a mentor um not really i the people online is all it's always been my People online have been, always been my mentors and um, inspiration can be gathered from everywhere and it's from different sources I find is, is a better way to learn than just one person. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I do wish I had a mentor in the beginning actually because they can teach you the, the, the very essential, the, the main essentials, but no, I didn't. Awesome. Um, Doris has a great question. She says, what is your favorite way to unwind and recharge your creativity, like sport, activity, hobby, et cetera? Uh, yeah, travel is a big one, obviously, and um, I, I keep busy in other ways, uh, obviously, with gym and um, soccer and sport and, I don't know, just getting out of the house. Yeah, that, yeah we way. can't see on this video, but Jacob is annoyingly ripped, if you check out his <laughs> Instagram. I, I know when you, you he visited us in the summer and came to hang out, and I was like, damn, I need to get down to the gym more. <laughs> yeah 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 so we have i have a gym nearby and I, I love going to that they're great coaches and it's um it's a very humbling place to be because the, the, the of all the people there in the community so i love going to the gym and when it's a place that you want to be then it's it's not a hassle to go like it I've got to the fact where i like get annoyed when i don't go to the gym because i miss a session so i if yeah. you can get that spot it's, it's amazing and i, I love <laughs> i love that 100 percent. um what's your favorite food uh, I love Thai food. It's like oh, spicy, me too. It's like sweet, salty, delicious. Yep. Um, it's prob probably savory, my favorite. Sour. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's good. All right, next time you're over, we need to go for some serious Thai food. Yep, not sushi. <laughs> now that was yeah. great. I love sushi. <laughs> um, yeah, and finally, what is? Oh, I say finally. I think one more came in, but uh, final one out of my questions. What is a weird fact about you that people might not know? Um. My dad is a magician. And oh, wow. A, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. He is a comedy magician. So he does shows around the world working on um, corporate gigs and cruise ships and things like that. His name's Phil, 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 Phil Cass. Phil, trust me, Cass. Phil Cass. Uh, I did his website about five years ago. So don't judge it by that. But um, <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Yeah. He's, yeah he, uh, he, have you picked up any of the magic? Uh, I kind of put in my design work. <laughs> good answer <laughs> yeah yeah I, I don't do any magic but um i enjoy watching it that's so funny uh lisa says any pets uh i have a little baby <laughs> <That's> about, <laughs> no we um we travel a lot so the, the pets kind of ground you a little bit too much so uh no pets here cool uh and ferry asks what devices do you take when you're traveling and working remotely uh, just my MacBook Pro. That's uh, I used that's to take it. a mouse with me, um, but yeah, that's all you need. Love it. Cool. Well, um, thank you so so much uh, for jumping on, Jacob. I'm going to give a quick recap of some of what we've covered, but I would say and and you know jump in if I've missed anything. But I think mood board and keep it very free flowing and just see where stuff evolves. Don't be afraid to get the sketch pad out, get the client's guidance and buy-in. So, you know, try and get them to actually articulate and vote on the aesthetic they're looking for. And that's really going to help guide the project. Don't set hard deadlines. Give yourself a bit of leeway in your case, two to four weeks instead of like a specific date to allow for that more free creative process. Mock up your work when you finally present it so they can see the perceived value easier. 
and potentially buy some business cards off of you over deliver with the value so don't hold back don't be afraid to go that extra mile and keep the clients in the loop throughout and make sure you actually educate them don't keep them in the dark totally yeah that's correct cool so that's, that's you in bullet, bullet point form my friend. <laughs> we're gonna save an hour yeah <laughs> <laughs> cool thank you so much um guys yeah, for the lovely comments you. uh as well jacob where's before we jump into the homework where is the best place to find you uh and i'll update that shiny green button that's currently pointing to your instagram uh just creative.com and you'll find all my socials there so i went perfect yeah. there is um yeah there is a ton of ridiculously helpful um content there so definitely go check it out. I mean, it literally is like a decade worth of articles, tutorials, um, case studies. So it's super, super useful. Uh, um, Lady T said, not bad, bad for a sick person. I'm starting to go horizontal. Yeah, you're doing great, man. <laughs> I've been muting for the coughs. Um, well, not bad for 5 a.m. either, brother. So. <laughs> nah, you deserve, you deserve your rest. <laughs> um, Jacob, thank you again for jumping on. What is the homework for the lovely people this week? Yes, uh, now that I can reveal it, it is uh, um, a, create a logo. Yep, create a logo uh, with the initials of your name. So my, Jacob Cass will just be JC, and then you'd put the name next to it uh, in, a, in a supporting typeface. So it has to gel together, kind of like what I was showing you with the man in Elliot, is a creative way to use your initials and type. And maybe if you want to go a step further, you can see how it works with, um, uh, I guess, a headline, sub copy, and a call to action, for example. So that's a that's a homework, and yeah, good luck. I, I love it, and obviously SJ's not on with me right now because it's kind of uh, a bit late. But look out for that in the forum. Tag us up, Design Cuts Community. Uh, tag up myself, uh, Tom Ross Media on Instagram. Tag up Jacob. We want to see your work, and hopefully we can reshare a lot of it. Um, but yeah, definitely, guys, go get involved in that challenge. It's a super fun one. So I'm already trying to think how TR is gonna. In fact, everyone in the uh, in the comments, just type your initials super quick. I want to see what kind of initials we've got going oh, on. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Logo inspiration. So PR for me. Got JC for Jacob. How about you guys? JC. DB. SU. DJ. CK. So straight away, this is like a stream of potential logos. Um, yeah. I think CK is done. Calvin yeah. Pine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Toilet this paper. is really cool, guys. <laughs> so, um, yeah, get those initials and work it into something. And you could even, I know we got some people that aren't necessarily logo designers. You could turn it into an illustration. You can turn it into whatever design you want. But just try and put those initials together in a creative way. Sam said, uh, Jeff, D so <laughs> <laughs> that might be a typo. Um, yes. AD. This is cool. And like my mind is already racing after looking at your workflow. So I'm already seeing creative ways that these letter forms could go together. Maybe you go super simple and abstract. Maybe you go more ornate. Maybe you kind of put them on their side and do all kinds of stuff. The sky is the limit. Definitely. And yeah, yeah. do your research yeah. on type on type websites as well when you're doing it because you can get some ideas from there and see it, make it your own. Love it. Thank you again. Everyone, please, please click the green button below this video. You have to check out Jacob, Jacob's website. Go follow him on social media. Go share him some love. And everyone, give it up for Jacob in the comments. That was awesome, man. Thank you so much. Thanks, man. Thanks Tom. Cheers. Thanks, everyone. Really appreciate it. And, I look forward uh, to seeing your work. Yeah, yeah. I can't wait to see it, guys. Um, I won't be here next week. I'm going to be on a mountain skiing. Um, awesome. but SJ will be hosting with, uh, I forget who the guest is, but we've got some amazing ones lined up. Um, although they get, they're going to have a tough job beating what Jacob bought today, I think in terms of sheer value. So Jacob, thanks again, mate. I'll talk to you soon yes. and everyone appreciate you jumping on with us. I am going to go have a lie down. All right. <laughs> See thanks, you later, man. Enjoy. Take care. Have a great day. Bye, Bye guys. Too.